This lantern will have you seeing red. Here's your look at McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Dark Knight's Metal Batrocitus. An evil amalgamation of Batman and Atrocitus from the Dark Multiverse. Batrocitus joined forces with the Batman Who Laughs team of Dark Knights in their attack of Earth Zero. After their victory, he was assigned to guard New Apocalypse, a hellish world where majority of Earth's remaining superheroes are imprisoned. Planning to free the superheroes, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Harley Quinn crash land on the planet, and Batrocitus and the Dark Knights go in to investigate. There they find the undead Jonah Hex, right where the zombie gunslinger is detonating explosives, destroying them all. Just waiting for everybody to arrive. I do see one person sitting in the back of the row there. Oh, that person appears to be a corpse. Unless the stinking corpse counts. Before we get a closer look, though, at Batrocitus, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarland Toys that did provide the sample that we're about to have a look at. Grabbing the tape measure, we're going to first figure it out in inches. Taking it right to the very top of his pointed cowl, Batrocitus stands at about six and a half inches in height. How about that? And that works out to be a figure that's about 16 and a half centimeters tall. Comparing things. I like to compare things. He likes to compare things. The corpse, that is. Bringing a couple of figures right now. Here's what Batrocitus looks like next to the Batman Who Laughs. Short of that, Batman Who Laughs does have those pointed points on the tops of his cowl, which does make him just a tad bit taller. He's about the same size as Batrocitus. Here's what he also looks like, bringing in a little bit of light to darkness. Here's what he looks like next to Green Lantern member Jon Stewart. And for no other reason than I just like this figure, here's also what Batrocitus looks like next to the DC Rebirth Batman. <laughs> Moving our focus to the things that come in clue with the figure. First of which, the figure comes in clue with a trading card. Batrocitus looks like he has gotten his school photo done, as once again we are getting figure photography here. I do like that they've used a red background here. That sells the idea that this guy is raging out. Down below you can see he's from Dark Knight's Death Metal. And then, of course, on the back of it, his real name is Bruce Wayne. This read-up, you can either pause and read for yourself, just between you, me, and the corpse that's sitting here. It's the same thing I read at the beginning of this video. We're going to move that to the side. The figure also comes in clear with a display stand. A standard black display stand, a standard singular peg at the top corner, and a standard pss branding of the DC logo down below. This can, of course, attach to either feet, either sides of Batrocitus' feet. And the other thing the figure also comes included with is the Red Lantern. I would say it's less red and actually more of an, a warm orange. It has what I can only describe as almost more of a gummy feel to it. In fact, the front back openings of the Lantern actually feel almost as if they're suction cups. They're that kind of softer plastic that they've used. Being that it's also translucent like this, if you had yourself a light source and shun that through, that would probably illuminate the Lantern rather nicely. He doesn't technically have gripping hands to hold the lantern, but what you can do instead is just sort of hook it onto his claw hands. You can have him either carrying around the lantern like that, or as I did in the beginning of this review, you can actually just have him with his arms up like this, as if he's actually using the lantern, maybe about to recharge those cells of his. Uh, by the way, also with the lantern itself, while he does have a handle to it, the handle is not movable. It's just all one molded piece. Put that to the side. The figure also comes included. Put your, let me put your hand down here for a second. All right. Unless he had a question. Uh, if your question was certainly, does he come included with anything else? The answer would be yes. Batrocitus also comes included with a pair of closed fists. One of the fists, may you may be able to spot, does actually have the red lantern ring. Now you can swap it out with obviously this side of his body, but it, just in case you are curious, the actual mauling hand does in fact also have the red lantern ring. And while it's nicely sculpted, because it's using the same color of plastic as the rest of the hand, it doesn't necessarily stand out. It would have been nice if they could have actually gone in there and darkened this, maybe added a different shade of red so that the ring would actually stand out, where you wouldn't have to hold it this close to the camera. But it's nicely detailed, though, for what it is. 
If you did want to change out the hands though, simply just wiggle the hand off and remove it from the ball peg. It's actually more of a swivel peg and just pop the new hand in. I don't know whether I will decide to settle on the idea of displaying him with the hand looking like this or just opting instead for the mauling hands. But those are all the accessories that come included with Batrocitus. Moving all those things out of the way and getting a closer look at the figure itself. It's a rather interesting design for Batman. It kind of reminds me of actually Nightmare Batman from Batman Begins. Sort of the way that his face blends into the rest of his cowl. He has very shiny, chomping teeth, as you can see there on the front of his face. Very small, beady red eyes. And these little markings that he has on the sides of his cowl. It looks pretty accurate to the way it looks to the comics. I don't think I would have changed anything necessarily to the face. Giving him a scowling face like this fits it appropriately, I think, for Batrocitus. As it certainly goes for the rest of the body, though. The body is that of the Red Lantern suit. He does have the amalgamation of the Bat emblem along with the Red Lantern logo. I think, actually, in the comics, most of the time, this is glowing. I would have liked to have seen this maybe done in a glowing red, where I think, like, the middle section would have still remained to be white. And then maybe around that, they could have maybe made this a dark red. Just found a way to maybe add it, even just a little bit of airbrushing also around that as well. So it looks like it's also always pulsating light. That's what this certainly goes through the rest of the costume. It's a nice looking suit. Uh, the shoulders, for example, one thing to point out is that the plastic that they use for the shoulders isn't quite the same color that they use for the rest of the body. As you'll see progressively, it goes from a lighter coloring of this sort of cherry taffy red and then goes as to that, more of a medium red. And then as you get to the abdomen area and then his side belt, it actually is a more of a darker color than the colors above it. It's pretty close though. It's pretty close though. Uh, the figure does have these gauntlets also on the sides of his arms, which basically would be a continuation of his glove here. And of course, we've decided to stick with this one for the time being. I don't know. I might just swap it back to the mauling hands. Nothing says a tro bat tross is better than a pair of mauling hands. Uh, for the rest of his body, while it's still stuck to black, they have nicely actually sculpted in some decent texturing. Sort of that basketball texturing that you normally see with a lot of these suits. It does look pretty good on the figure, and at least there's something to take your pull your eye in so it's not just smooth plastic that they're using. The boots are decently detailed too as well. I don't think there's really a lot of paint happening here. Where I think the paint is really being used is used for obviously the top section, the main emblem in the middle. I don't know if necessarily the gloves would have been used to paint or whether they've actually just molded that in red plastic. I mean, like the hands themselves, maybe they are actually painted because the wrist, this part of the glove, doesn't actually swivel from the rest of the forearm. So they likely would have painted this part and then just molded the hands in plastic instead. Also the same for the boots. The boots don't move independently on their own. So it makes me lead to believe that this has actually been painted because this would have been just a, the neutral color of plastic. Although I don't know whether they would have painted this the black and left this behind the red because painting the red over the black would I think would have been a harder thing to do. Of course, he does have, uh, again, as already mentioned, peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Let's talk a little bit about the posability on Batrocitus. First of which, the figure does have a ball joint. So you can rotate the head all the way around. The head can look down, only by just a little bit, and the head can also look up. Ooh, a little prickly on the tops of his cowl there. As for the shoulders, the shoulders do come out, and I would have thought it would have been a little more limited, being the fact that the shoulders stick out as far as they do. These aren't the softest of plastics, but at least it allows the arms to come out at a comfortable 90-degree angle bend. You can take the arms and move them forward. This is basically where things are going to start stopping short, but you can also rotate it back that way as well. The figure does have a bicep swivel. The figure also possesses a double hinge on the elbow. Although the size of his biceps, it's nearly impossible to be able to bend this at a double hinge elbow. I mean, you can kind of bend it this way and make use of the double hinge on the elbow, but then it starts breaking up the bottoms of his elbow and it looks a little more sectional. Hands rotate also all the way around. He has an upper torso ball joint. Uh, no, uh, he has a ball, ball joint, of course, down below as well. But what they've nicely done is they've actually skirted the plastic. What they've done is the ball joint is really essentially here underneath the abdomen. But because they've used the softer plastic covering over the waistline, you really, I mean, when to look at it from a distance, you'd almost not see that there's even a ball joint there in the first place. But he does have a secondary ball joint there as well. Legs are on a nice ratcheted joint. You can give him a good splits for bat trosses. His legs, though, I will say are a little bit more limited. Not that you would want to have him in any more of a walking pose than what he's got right now. But when you do move the legs, they do get a little tight because the trunks that he has are so close in quarters to his thighs. 
There's a mild swivel at the top of the thigh, more the way it's been assembled in the factory. Double hinge on the knee. And as we already mentioned, there is no articulation here in the boots. It's just more of a continuation of the calf. But he does have at least an ankle pivot this way, an ankle pivot this way. And the figure also has toe articulation as well. I really like to look at this figure. Uh, one thing I certainly would love to see this guy do, similar to what that hazmat Batman that we got before, I believe the gold label version of him also had the middle section of his suit illuminate. That would be also a nice touch to see this done with Batrocitus. Uh, the uh, Once again, going back to the uh, Red Lantern. The Red Lantern, like I said, is basically just a staction piece, but certainly is going to be one thing I'm going to be displaying along with the figure. I'm just going to hook it onto his hand. And maybe what I'll do is I'll make a fist. That seems to be an appropriate way to pose any sort of lantern, red or otherwise. Yeah, I like the look of this figure quite a lot. I mean, yes, again, it's just another Batman figure, but at least it's a Batman figure that's been combined with something else. Batro Batrocitus is quite a sinister fellow in the comics, and he translates nicely as well to a plastic figure too. For those that may say, what, another Batman from McFarlane Toys, at least I would make this reply, at least it's a Batman that it looks more like a Red Lantern than it does Batman. I mean, other than really just this head sculpt and a change of emblem in the middle of his torso, there's nothing really telltale about this guy that screams Batman to me. And one thing that's good about him is he can fill in some of the other lanterns that we don't really have a lot to work with right now. But at least when we eventually get more red lanterns down the road, I think I'd be more leaning to the idea of displaying this guy with the red lanterns and not necessarily part of the Batman Who Laughs' team. Uh, the lantern, as already mentioned, doesn't have any posability to it. It's basically just a staction molded lantern. One thing, again, as mentioned, I hope that at some point we do down the road get this guy as a gold label release, maybe with a glowing emblem in the middle of his body. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys that did allow me the chance to have a look at the Batrocitus from the Dark Knight's Death Metal. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and do certainly want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. And though while we have wrapped up things for Batrocitus, there will be more DC Multiverse reviews coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.